Those on annihilation and creation operators led to the quantization of the electromagnetic field into photons. Here we're going to introduce fermion annihilation and creation operators. These operators will lead to the natural quantization of the number of fermions possible in a fermion mode or single particle state, limiting us to zero or one as required. And analogously to the boson operator description of the electromagnetic wave with field operators, these fermion operators will allow us to describe fermion wave functions in terms of fermion operators. Once we work in systems with many fermions, the use of these fermion creation and annihilation operators is almost essential from a practical point of view. Even with a single fermion, the creation and annihilation operators give a particularly simple notation that we can use to describe other operators such as the Hamiltonian. Here we postulate annihilation and creation operators for fermions giving them the required properties. The key property these operators require, in comparison to the boson operators, is that they will correctly change the sign of the wave function upon exchange of particles. This will lead us to a formalism similar in character to the boson operators, though we'll find so-called anti-commutation relations instead of the commutation relations of the boson operators. With such fermion operators, we never again have to worry about the anti-symmetry with respect to exchange. The anti-commutation relations will take care of these details quite conveniently. <laughs>
basis states don't have to be eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, we just want them to be appropriate orthogonal states that we can work with, at least mathematically. In this particular case, for example, if we put the electron in this state first and then we try to add an electron into the same well, this electron would repel the other one, the other electron would see some quite different potential in here, and although we might conceive of putting the electron in this state, this state, and certainly the pair of these two electrons like this in the well, would not be an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. But they still would be valid mathematical states that we could use as orthogonal basis states. So as I said, the second electron would not see a simple square potential, and so this would not actually be an eigenstate of this particular Hamiltonian. Each of the single particle fermion basis states can be considered as a mode of the fermion field, just as the boson basis states for photons were modes of the electromagnetic field. The boson modes could have any integer number of particles in them, though the fermion modes can only have zero or one. So, just as the boson annihilation and creation operators for a given mode allowed any positive or zero integer number of bosons in the mode, so also the fermion annihilation and creation operators will only allow zero or one fermion in the mode, if we set them up correctly. For manipulations in the fermion case, we have to define one standard order of labelling of the single particle basis states. This is up to us, it doesn't matter what it is, but we have to choose one, at least to think about this problem. And we'll use that standard order when we're looking at the determinants for multiple fermion basis functions. For example, we might have a system with four potential wells, as we talked about before, and we might label sequentially all of the states in the first well. So we might label those A, B, C, and D. And then we might label all the states in the second well, E, F, G, and H, and so on. Or we could choose some other labeling sequence, labeling all of the first states in wells one through four, so A, B, C, and D, and then all the second states in wells 1 through 4, E, F, G, and H, and so on. Or we could choose some other more complicated labelling sequence. It really doesn't matter, but for our argument that follows, we have to choose something. So, as I said, it does not matter what sequence we choose. We just have to choose one standard labelling sequence here for our argument. And for our argument, we're going to label all those single particle basis states using the lowercase letters, A and B and C and D and so on. And we will use alphabetical order as our standard order here. Now, we might, for example, have a basis state corresponding to three identical fermions, one in state B, one in state K, and one in state M. In standard order, we would write that state in the following form. This row has got all b's in it, this row has got all k's in it, this row has got all m's in it, so we've written these in alphabetical order. This would be a standard order way of writing our state, in this case, with three identical fermions. We've also introduced another notation here, an occupation number representation. And this is very like what we did for the bosons. We also had an occupation number representation here for bosons, writing out just a list of which particular states were occupied. In this occupation number representation, as in this state here, the 0a means that the single particle fermion state, or fermion mode if you like, a is empty. And you see there's no A anywhere in this determinant notation. There's no particle in state A in this basis state. There's one particle in state B. So this 1B means one particle in state B. And because this is a fermion state, the determinant combination of the different fermions to the occupied states 
is understood. So this list here, when we see that for fermions, we understand it's a determinant style of combination of all of the different permutations. And the determinant contains all the different permutations within it. Now, we could also write a state that was not in standard order for the rows. For example, this state here is a perfectly valid fermion basis state. But note that we've got k up here and b in here. This is not in alphabetical order. To get that state into standard order for the rows, we would have to swap the first and second rows. And if we swap two adjacent rows in a determinant, we have to multiply the determinant by minus 1. So, swapping the two top rows, we have, starting with what we had before, and then performing the swap, we acquire a minus 1 in here. And writing this out now in the occupation number notation, we know that this particular state is minus this determinant, because this is the determinant in standard order. These notations are the same in their meaning. And we have the minus sign here. And so this state, as written in this form with k, b, and m, is minus the state written with b, k, and m. And this is the standard order version. Same here, same here with the minus sign out front because this state is not in standard order. Mm -hmm.